This podcast is presented by the Bank of San Antonio, our community source for entrepreneurial business growth. We dedicate this episode to all of the entrepreneurs powering the possible and earning their growth every day. To build your business even further, join the network of entrepreneurs at the Bank of San Antonio, member FDIC. But I'll tell you, small business really changed my family tree. I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't that I had taken that risk and started my own small business. You know, someone once told me, if you don't share your story, how can other young women know that anything is possible? And so after that, um, I felt like I had a responsibility to tell my story. And so I tell my story because anything is possible. Welcome to San Antonio Business Heroes. From how to build a business to finding the right talent for your team, listen to the insights behind how businesses are grown in San Antonio. I'm Angelica Palm, and on the show today, how a love for community created one of San Antonio's most successful entrepreneurs. The expansive career of Esperanza Hope Andrade a trailblazing entrepreneur and community leader in San Antonio is proof that with the right attitude, work ethic, and resilience, you can achieve your wildest dreams. It's been amazing. I, you know, I didn't speak English when I was in the first grade. Uh, my parents were not educated. Um, so I, you know, I always say, if I needed an excuse to not be successful, I had them. But that's not what I chose. This experience of not being able to speak English when she first started school created within her an unyielding strength to break the mold and smash every expectation of what her future could hold. She managed every seeming disadvantage to become stronger. And her relentless pursuit for opportunity is exactly why her story matters. She is steadfast, and she rises to meet the opportunities of today. And so can you. I've, I've been very proud of, uh, of my community. And, um, you know, someone once said that I had paid my dues. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I thought, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm-hmm. I have so much more to give because it's given so much to me and my family. I said, look at me, if I can make it. You know, I, I recently met a young woman that was um, a physician. And uh, we were sharing the facts that we're both introverts. Um, and I said, oh, my God, I said, look, I said, I'm so proud of you. I said, you're a physician, a female Latina physician. I said, think about what I could have done had I been a physician <laughs> <laughs> with all that education. Well, but, yes. <laughs> but it just goes to prove that anyone can be. There's opportunity for everyone. Hope's career as an entrepreneur began with a leap of faith, leaving her corporate job to start a small business. This move jump-started what would become a long and prosperous career in the world of entrepreneurship, where she would create numerous businesses and work in high-profile jobs for the Texas government. She was one of Texas's longest-serving Secretary of States and the first Hispanic woman to have served in the position. In May of 2017, Hope and the group she co-founded alongside fellow entrepreneur Lisa Wong Go Rio San Antonio River Cruises were awarded by the City of San Antonio a 10-year, $100 million contract to operate our city's fleet of electric river barges. Yeah, I think I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, As a child, I was looking at things where I could um, make money uh, to provide for my family. So I was always looking for an opportunity. Hope believes her success was possible because she stood on the shoulders of her ancestors and those who came before her. She believes everyone has the power to rise, no matter what circumstances they may come from. She would say, you must never give up and hold on. Because what you're going to be able to accomplish, not even in your wildest dream would you imagine it. Purpose is at the heart of Hope's philosophy on entrepreneurship. Some might say that she's paid her dues. But as she continues to build businesses, as she has done for well over 40 years, Her singular focus is to make San Antonio better for her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, and generations to follow. Giving back to the community that helped make her who she is today is what her inspiring mission is all about.
Welcome to San Antonio Business Heroes. I'm your host, Angelica Palm, here with a business blueprint that shows how businesses are built and grown in San Antonio. Today, we share exclusive insights from an inspired entrepreneur who sees every no as a gift and every day as a new canvas to create impact. She shares the toughest lesson she had to learn as an entrepreneur, which is letting go to grow, why customer service will make or break a business, and how having the right team in place is the engine for growth and longevity. As an entrepreneur, when you strive to serve, help, and contribute, you find purpose. Purpose far outweighs the temporary high of motivation. As you'll hear in this conversation, the outcome of leading with purpose is positive impact on our community, and positive impact is worth fumbling our way toward and getting it wrong all on the way to getting it right. It's something to be practiced. Making a difference takes guts and it takes risk. I'm so excited about this, and I hope you'll share it with your friends, colleagues, and those who need inspiration to power their business or idea. So as you're listening, take a screenshot, tell me what you think about the podcast, or tag us at SA Business Heroes over on Instagram and Facebook. Let us know that you're listening and what you'd like to hear more about. I look forward to hearing from you. Let's dig in. Hope's adoptive parents gave her fundamental principles that fueled her relentless spirit. She lives her values, both as an entrepreneur and advocate for the next generation. Hope's mother would tell her. Being kind to people, uh, doing what you say you're going to do. My mother always taught me, you know, don't don't say it if you're not going to do it. And so I've always been responsible, uh, but I've always been kind, uh, which my mother taught me to be hardworking. I mean, if you're going to start a business and think, oh, I'm going to be an absentee owner and I'm going to come in and work Monday, Wednesday, Friday and play golf Tuesday and Thursday, that doesn't work. (laughs) It may work after about 25 years, but at the beginning it doesn't. But you're just on a high. I mean, the fact that you feel that this is what you're being able to accomplish, it's just awesome. And, you know, this is what drives me every day. According to Hope, all of her growth became possible because early on she set her mind to becoming who she is now, wanting success so that she could provide more for her family. Her story started there, and where it led her on her entrepreneurial journey is truly remarkable. This is a conversation with an entrepreneur who has reinvented herself time and time again to reach her wildest dreams. When she first started her business in her 20s, she had no option but to succeed in the vision yet to be built. You know, it was exciting. Um, I don't think that I ever doubted myself. Uh, I didn't have an option to do that. Uh, everything that I had done to take the step, uh, I had to make sure that I was going to be successful. And so, you know, I'd left corporate America. Uh, we were, m- my husband and I, uh, we depended on that second income. It was a big step for us. So there was no choice of me saying, oh, what if I don't make it? I was going to make it. And I think that was my driving force. I wanted to, to leave a legacy um, behind. And, um, and I'm, just, uh, I'm just proud that uh, I've been able to, I've been blessed, but we're all blessed in the same way. Um, that I've worked hard, that I understood early on that I had to believe in myself and that sometimes um, that's all I had. Hope trusted in her gifts and her talents, and she knew that she was called to rise above her understanding of what was or what could be. She trusted that she was born whole with everything within her she needed to succeed. Consider what you could do if you made your dreams so big that they demanded that you grow into them. Oftentimes, if you just start down the path, the necessary resources, knowledge, people, and opportunities will unfold before you. You know, when I hit the pillow at night, and, and it's usually you know, only for a few seconds that I have left that I'm awake because <laughs> it's been a long day, but I'm proud. It, it's, it's a sense of pride of the fact that so many people depend on you. It's a great responsibility, huge responsibility. But the fact that you know that you're an employer, 
that you help improve people's lives, that you provide a great service, and that people see you as a role model. But it's just an awesome feeling. And I, so every night I thank God for all the opportunities that I've gotten to experience and for everything that I do uh, to help others. With caring for her family at the core of her motivation for success, it's no surprise that customer service has been the foundation for Hope's businesses over the years. She focuses on coaching her team, not giving direction. When she sees a teammate doing something great, she celebrates what's working. She has found that to lead a strong team, get the barriers out of the way to let people do the things that they do well. This creates a culture of empowerment. I wanted someone that believed in the same customer service I did. Even today, when I'm out there with my managers, okay, and I watch them okay, handle a situation that could arise into a, a problem. Okay? And I watch them, how they take care of that customer. Afterwards, I'll tell them, you took care of her exactly the way I would. And that is listening, okay? acknowledging, okay? and trying to find a way to correct it. Yes. And so customer service, I'm telling you, my businesses have been built on customer service and making sure that your employee understands that importance. Hope valued her team so much, and word traveled fast that her companies were places where employees could grow. Word travels fast, okay? And I'll tell you, when I was at that stage where I was hiring people that were smarter than I was, and, uh, and that I was gonna hand over you know, huge responsibilities of, of my business, is I, ha I would even ask myself, oh my God, you're so qualified. Why would you want to come work with me? Uh -huh. But it was because word had traveled. This was an environment where you could grow, where you were treated well and respectfully and so on. So it's, and you know, today's world is very competitive. Uh, workforce, it, it is tough to get out there. But I've had a great, great opportunity to retain good employees. But I'm getting ahead on her story and I'd like to show how Hope has gathered the best of who she's become by first starting out at IBM. I came from corporate America from a great company called IBM, okay? And back then, it was all about customer service. And I'll always say that I learned the best customer service there. You know, everything is about timing. Uh, for me, while I was in corporate America, it was about uh, timing. Diversity was just being talked about. And uh, at the time, I was a young Latina woman that was hungry and was going to make it um, and grow, no matter what. And, uh, and <laughs> they found that in me, so, uh, so I quickly um, grew there and um, you know, was starting to move up. But um, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, I think fortunately, uh, I realized that I, I, that's, not, that's not where I thought I should be. I wasn't uh, fulfilled mm -hmm. in, um, I had so many, so many more. I think I was the the uh, leader in uh, suggestions because I had suggestions for everything. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm always looking yeah. on ways to improve, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that's how I have found my my businesses. Is I'm always looking at opportunities. I'm always looking at filling a void mm -hmm. in a service, or can I do that better? Mm -hmm. You know, the businesses that I've been in, it's because there was a void in the service, and I fulfilled it. And I did it in a way that they knew that um, I was part of that. I was always going to be there. Um, and then also, when you see a service that's being provided that you know could be better or you could improve it. So those are the areas that I've been able to be successful in. But the other thing is that you have to understand that you can't do it alone. And so, I think those it's I always have a problem when someone says a self-made person. None of us are self-made. No. So we all we all need people around us and we all need to work together as a team. Hope's first piece of advice to entrepreneurs is to be thankful for the no's that you receive, because often greater wisdom is found in those no's. Okay, look, today I say I'm grateful for those no's. Okay. Um because it built character. Um, sometimes getting that no makes you even stronger and says, I'll show them. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, my ideas, I mean, once you start a business, I thought that I could do anything in business. Uh, and so I made some mistakes. I started a business that I had no business getting into, but I learned from them. And so what I did was I learned to stay focused on things that I was good at and stop trying to invest in things that I wasn't good at. And I also learned that I had to always have hands on, but that I also had to let go. Along the way, one of the hardest lessons Hope learned in her career was how to let go and let others lead. When you start a business, it's often difficult to hand over responsibility. You have a vision for where the company is headed, so it's natural to think that you can do many of the aspects of your business better than someone else. But you have to let go to grow. When you have the right team in place, trust their leadership and empower them to impact. When you're a small business owner, it's hard to let go because you think that no one can do it better than you. And the fact that you started it, it's like, oh my goodness, this is my baby and no one's going to touch it. But you can't grow until you let go. You know, I, I had to learn that. But you've got to trust. And you, when you meet that person that you're going to hand over part of something that's so special, that you've worked, that you've cried with, that you've laughed about, you're handing that over to someone to say, are you going to be, are you going to take care of it in the same manner that I do? But if you don't trust them and let go of it, then that person can't accomplish what you've asked them to do. I, I, I learned once that sometimes small businesses don't grow past the three to five employees. And it's because we have a very hard time letting go. The minute that I let go is when I grew. The foundation for this type of growth is built by having a deep understanding of your business vision and knowing how to articulate that vision. This is especially true when you're looking to fund your business idea and partner with a local bank for a loan. The key to strong relationships is communicating your vision, not only to your team, but to your business partners as well. And I will tell you that the other uh, important aspect of my success has been not just as I've mentioned, my employees and uh, the services that we provide and, and everything that we instill in our employees, it's the great partners that we've had uh, surround our business. Our bank, our professional, you know, our attorneys, our accountants. Mm -hmm. When we first started, you always think, oh, I can't afford that mm -hmm. um, type of expertise. The lesson learned is that you cannot afford not to. Um, so for me, it was always communicating making sure that everyone that was involved in our business understood what we were going through, whether it was growth. Uh, we'd call in our banker and say, let me share with you what's going to happen and, uh, and what we may need to kind of put them on notice. Right. Um, right. Because sometimes you need it quick. You need you know, financial support quickly. And so I think the fact that we've, we always worked with the local bank, uh, people knew us, it wasn't that you were being discussed at a table that they had no idea, that um, people knew that you were going to do everything possible to make the success and you would never let the bank down. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at what type of, of finances you need to start a business, how would you say that a new entrepreneur should approach that? Carefully, mm -hmm. because uh, you need to make sure that uh, you understand the position uh, that you're in, you, you know, so I, people will, when I ask people, well, you're going to go to the bank, how much are you going to ask for? Well, I don't know. Well, you can't go in and just say, I don't know. <laughs> you have to have a plan. Right. Do you have a business plan? You have to, someone's lending you money, okay? So they expect you to know how you're going to spend it, how you're going to pay it back. So make sure that the first time you walk in, you wow them, okay? Because you've got a business plan, you've got a vision, and you understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. but, you know, by the time you get to the bank, you need to know if you've got a product, how many you're going to sell, how much it's going to cost you to manufacture, uh, you know, payroll, rent, all your fixed costs, uh, because your banker's going to ask you that question. You're the one in business. You, they can't tell you, so you have to make sure that you've done all your research and that you walk in well prepared. To start a business and get a potential banking partner to buy into your vision, Hope advises entrepreneurs to believe in themselves first and foremost. We've got to believe in yourself, okay? Uh, you can't walk in and have a meeting about a potential business you're getting into and start doubting yourself, okay? 
So you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to make sure that you, you've done your research, you've done your homework. Uh, is there competition? Study your competition, okay? What's gonna set you apart from them? Why are you going to be successful when you're almost providing the same service? Because you're gonna do it better, or you're gonna do it less expensive, or you're going to provide more customer service. Something that sets you apart, that makes sure that, you, that the banker will say, oh yes, I can see where he would be, or he or she, uh, would be very good in this type of business. Mm -hmm. But you've got to make sure that you've done your homework and you've got to make sure that you don't start doubting yourself. And from there, fill your day up with more than you can accomplish. Well, someone told me that always have more on your calendar than you can accomplish in that day. And, uh, and so I tried to. And it's, uh, it's great when you accomplish it. Uh, sometimes you have to carry over. But every night as I'm driving home, I reflect and I kind of peek at the rearview mirror and look at myself. And I'm either smiling at myself because we've had a, I've had a great day, <laughs> or I'm a little disappointed uh, sometimes at myself. Yeah. And so, uh, but usually I'm just, I'm just happy. So, you know, listening to you, I can tell that there is this innate curiosity and this constant review of the world around you to see what you can improve. What would you say that you're most hopeful for about, for your business this next year? Well, that we keep growing because that always provides security for my employees, okay? Um, and when I grow, I'm also able to give back to my community. Yes. I think that, uh, you know, it's important that, that we, I come, from a, I come from a family that we didn't know how to give back uh, financially. Mm -hmm. And there's so many causes that benefit from successful right. uh, entrepreneurs. And so we're able to do that. And it's just, a, it's just an awesome feeling coming together and, and doing that. That's wonderful. Well, looking at what the challenges that are coming up in, in front of you and, and keeping up with a changing consumer landscape, how do you keep up? Do the same thing. Work hard, give it all you have, be respectful, kind, and learn that your employees are the most important part. In a moment, Hope shares how valuable it was for her son to see her hard work in action and how she works diligently today to build her legacy. Here's a hint. Her day starts at 5.30 a.m. when she is energized by all that she has yet to accomplish. This is Maitland Rutledge, and I lead our Small Business Administration Lending Department at the Bank of San Antonio. I appreciate Hope's story because she is testament that small business owners are the backbone of our city. When I meet with business owners like Hope, we talk about how to structure financing, and I offer ideas that some entrepreneurs may not have thought existed. As an SBA advisor, I get to hear how people grow businesses in San Antonio, and there's nothing better than that. If you're interested in learning more, my contact information is in the show notes. Let's talk and build a plan to power your business. We left off talking about how hard work and self-belief are the foundation to building a legacy. When Hope first started her businesses, it was anything but easy. You know, I go back to believing that anyone can do anything once you've set your mind to it. Yes. But the number one thing that you have to understand is that it is hard work. And it's not going to happen overnight. Unless you've got an invention that you patent that no one else has, <laughs> it's going to take you some time. I mean, I, uh, I remember carrying a paycheck in my purse that I'd have to make sure that I waited a couple of days before I could pay myself. <laughs> so, uh, but then, it's all, it's something, then something happens and it's all worth it. As a working parent, Hope remembers how challenging it was to build a business while raising a family. But she found that the lessons her son learned while seeing her overcome and achieve are part of his character today. My son, I always had guilt, uh, lots of guilt that I didn't do all, that I wasn't at all the things I was supposed to be because I was uh, growing a business. Or that I wasn't listening to his question about his homework because I was too busy worried about payroll on Friday. But I promise you, after he grew up and I shared that guilt with him, he said, oh, mom, look at me now. I'm just enjoying what you <laughs> what you succeeded with. And he's, he's a great man and he, he always tells me that uh, even though his sick days were spent in my office underneath my desk because I couldn't stay home, he learned so much. Mm -hmm. Don't feel guilty, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't matter uh, where you are as long as you're together. 
To amplify her dedication to building the next generation, Hope views paying respect to her parents while also building for her grandson's future. And my mother taught me, as I said, kindness. But oh my goodness, they'd be, I know they would be so proud of me. And when I still go and I visit them where they're at in the, the cemetery, I, I talk to them and, and I said, thank you. Thank you for guiding me and raising me to be a good person. I try to be a good person. Well, and, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, and I've worked hard to make you proud. I, th I think everything I've done is to make my, was to make my parents proud. Today, after they're gone, everything I do is to make my grandsons proud. The thread that ties together the various aspects of Hope Andrade's business journey is people, her community. Her growth has been driven from day one by a selfless want to provide for her family. And her success has come from her capacity to connect with, nurture, trust, and learn from those she works with. Everything she has given to achieve her dreams has been done so that she can give back to those around her tenfold. It's people like Hope Andrade that show what potential lies in San Antonio. And her story is a testament that a community-focused business model is the kind that truly flourishes, the kind that we need more of. Can I tell you a story? I started this podcast because it was one of those projects that demanded to be made for this time and this moment. I built this project so that its own DNA would emerge. I want to share with you one of the things that this podcast has become, a smoke signal. It's become a smoke signal of stories shared to attract those whose time is coming. It's a smoke signal to those who are intentional about building into what they feel called to make. Hopefully, that calling feels a little too big for you, and it's going to take some growing into. This smoke signal is for those who are dreaming wild dreams and for those who know that they have the power to rewrite the economy of their lives. Make moves, step up, do more, do less, say no, and say yes. So if you're listening to this podcast, waiting for permission to imagine it forward, this is it. Grab a seat at the entrepreneurial table, and like hope, set an example so that others can see what is possible. Like hope, Tell your story so that others can see. Thank you to our sponsor, the Bank of San Antonio, member FDIC, for supporting our show. Now, if you're like many San Antonians out there who have a great idea but don't quite know how to get started, or if you already have a business and you're thinking about expanding your capacity, you know that there's plenty of information out there, but you don't have the time to scour the internet for it. This is where the Bank of San Antonio can help you with their business banking coaches who share the information you need to fund, protect, and grow your business. Get the Bank of San Antonio's Guide to Full Business Growth, the Business Blueprint, when you go to thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. Again, download your free business blueprint guide today at thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. One more time, thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please do give us a review. You can also write to us on Facebook and Instagram at SA Business Heroes. Our show was produced this week by Catherine Staha and me. Also, special thanks to Hope Andrade for sharing her expertise and advice. I'm Angelica Palm, and you're listening to San Antonio Business Heroes from the Bank of San Antonio. 